Okay, very good morning guys. It's Tuesday 21st of April. I hope you are doing well and you join us at quite a historic moment that happened in markets last night. And as you can see to the side of me, um, Will and I were still at our desks last night. We managed to catch the oil move as it was unfolding live uh, and a really great 12 minute little session that that Will did yesterday. So if you go on our YouTube channel, um, obviously please subscribe to the, the channel. I'd be much appreciated first and foremost. But if you scroll down, we have this kind of morning briefing section. So any sort of snap market analysis pieces that we do, we put it in there and we, we just dropped this one about 10 hours ago and it's already got you know nearly 25,000 views, which is just amazing. But I think it, that's down to the fact that, you know, it is a little bit unusual. Well, not a little bit, it's very unusual. Obviously, the price of oil yesterday trading below zero for the first time in history, traders basically willing to pay $40 a barrel just to get someone to take crude off their hands, which is absolutely unprecedented. And, you know, this was the, <laughs> the, the move that really solidifies that, looking at the, the kind of first month contract. So in this case would have been the expiring today, May futures contract, getting all the way down. And you can see here for the first time ever breaking the kind of zero bound on the on the, on the the downside. Uh, so definitely this is the, the real talking point. Uh, and thankfully it was something where for some of our new uh, kind of trainee traders that had started our, our, our program yesterday, this was a, a session that we, we spoke at at length uh, about this specific issue about you know this extreme contango at the moment and, and what exactly does that mean how does it happen and so on so hopefully everyone was was well prepared for that but absolutely jump back onto the youtube channel that video there what just happened to oil prices um, that is direct from will our managing director it's a fantastic kind of glimpse to seeing it all unravel as it did last night so yeah, I'm going to give you a summary, but definitely check that out as well when you get 12 minutes spare uh, going forward throughout the rest of the day. Uh, just a quick look at this morning, what is going on? Well, you know, that is the real focal point. Uh, there's been a little bit of a, a dip overnight uh, in equity index futures. Uh, quite a few people, Bloomberg, pinning that on actually some news from the North Korean leader, Kim Jong-un, who's said to be uh, unwell at the moment following some surgery and perhaps then some apprehension about who his potential replacement might be. I'm not sure if I buy into that a great deal to be honest and any time we have seen in the past kind of North Korean related news obviously more based around kind of um, kind of ballistic missile testing that we had back what in 2017 type era um, that generally the news tends to be faded quite quickly and I don't really see this being too much different uh, and that's already kind of happening at the moment uh, as we go into the European Open equity index futures just bumping up a, a touch uh, and also to, to kind of validate that that idea gold and Tino it's not really responding at all uh, gold fairly flat down about three dollars trading at 1708 in the futures the 10 year up about two and a half um, looking at crude, where does it trade this morning before we get into what exactly happened yesterday? Um, looking at the June contract, obviously this is where the volume is, so the kind of classified front month, and that remains at just above 20 bucks. And we did run down to very close 19 cents toward the, the figure uh, or the handle in that kind of late overnight or late US trade. Um, probably now we've, we've etched out a fairly significant point of resistance here which we got to test in the Asia Pacific session before we've come back down uh, a decent kind of buck and 20 cents and that being that initial kind of blip low that we had at the reopening of Globex trade uh, to kick off the week uh, yesterday. So oil in the June contract is positive about a dollar but absolutely still warrants monitoring and in the May contract obviously due for expiration today uh, after touching obviously down at a negative 40.32 is now up trading at a positive $1.36 for the time being but again I would say you want to be focusing on the June contract don't worry too much about that May one at the moment but I'm going to cycle you through a few different things so first of all let's just explain from a top level what exactly happened last night and, and the easiest way for me to summarize this was that the primary uh, reason behind it was because of the end of the May contract. So with the crude futures contracts, they're a little bit different from, say, um, 
equity in terms of equity indices or if you were trading say the US T note those typically go in four kind of calendar based quarter futures contracts so typically March, June, SEP and DEC whereas with oil given the fact that there's a degree of physical delivery tied to the receipt if you let or hold the contract to expiration meaning you'll take delivery and that's going to be an important point we'll talk about that's led to what happened yesterday but basically because the end of May contract forces kind of physical receipt at a time then when storage capacity is low uh, and given that that timing they've got to get it off their hands given the fact that predominant volume of the futures markets is speculators they have no intention at all about taking delivery of physical barrels of oil and that means then it leads to forced selling to the point where traders were willing to pay $40 i.e. a negative price of about $40.30 just to get someone to take that crude off their hands because they definitely don't want receipt of it. Um, this then leads us on to a little bit more detail about here. So this is uh, Cushing, Oklahoma. So this is where we look at uh, the specific geographic kind of hub, which is the storage point of um, oil in North America before then it kind of gets distributed elsewhere within the country and beyond. And in the past three weeks, crude has been flowing into Cushing at a breakneck speed, averaging about 745,000 barrels per day and taking in more oil from an equivalent point of view than what the entire country of Belgium would consume. That's uh, going in every single day <laughs> at the moment. Um, now at that rate, if that were to remain consistent, it would basically mean then that tanks, um, if I switch over my chart here, this is the, the, the Cushing chart, so you can see the massive jump that we've had. At this rate, tanks would then be full before the end of May, something that's never happened before. Uh, we have got into previous, uh, many years ago, or several years ago, we got to a point where that was looking likely, and that was when prices came under quite dramatic pressure a few years ago. And if we were to get absolutely full, that has never happened before. So just the idea of that approaching, and given the rate of which now, um, this, as you can see, this bar chart, these numbers are rising, that is all but inevitable. And the problem you have, of course, is we're in an extended lockdown due to the health pandemic of coronavirus at the moment. So the idea being here is that although OPEC have cut this deal, you know, the ability for them to react in terms of on the supply side quick enough and there's been some talk about them bringing those forwards and doing it more soon, uh, but also as well this natural kind of offsetting of production in America, it all can't happen quick enough because of the expiration being today was the problem we had yesterday. The other thing as well, and a few other things to be mindful of that probably exacerbated this move, I've just switched over my chart now and I'm looking at something else. So for one, hedge funds uh, were net purchasers of petroleum futures and options for the third week running last week. Now, what we're looking at here is the largest crude ETF known as the US Oil Fund. And it received basically billions of dollars in fresh funds uh, in the most recent week, accumulating a fifth of all of its outstanding contracts in the May futures contract. But last week, what we had, it rolled its position because given we have these monthly uh, futures expirations in oil, it rolled from May until June. And that mean, meant that all of that massive uh, kind of ownership of these contracts by the, the US oil fund ETF then evaporated from May because it had shifted over to June. And that coupled with retail investors in particular uh, were trying to pick the turning point on oil, you know, obviously getting caught quite badly there on the back of this. So what does this mean? I mean, going forward, I think what's, well, first of all, what's a mechanism that people can do to try to counteract this now from the forces that be, whether it be Trump or these oil producing nations? Well, for one, President Trump responded to these negative prices. He spoke from the White House yesterday in a press conference and he plans to fill the spare space in the SPR, the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. Um, and by saying he would look into a proposal to sh stop shipments of Saudi Arabian oil that are currently en route to the US. Because remember, when it gets to the US, where are they going to put it? And that's only going to force this kind of extreme contango situation even further. 
Um, can OPEC help? I guess that's going to be a question that some people might ask. And the point being is no. I mean, the OPEC deal that they've struck, OPEC plus, plus these kind of G20 energy producers, the problem is if they double down and let's say they take this 9.75 OPEC kind of cut and they went to 18 million, let's say, and that previous discussions we had about supply and demand, that definitely then brings down the supply side. But the problem is, forget supply and demand. The problem is, is where are you going to park this oil? It doesn't address the issue that we were just looking at here, which is Cushing is nearing its full capacity. Whether OPEC cut that or not, that's not going to change that situation. So for me, what I think is quite interesting, and I have heard a couple of big banks talking about this as well, is there could be further turmoil in the oil market to come over the coming weeks. And the June contract could be next to see a similar episode to what we've just seen in a few weeks' time. And I do think that's perhaps quite likely going to be the case, because if you think about it, the demand situation, given the ongoing lockdown we're likely to go through globally, as well as in the US, and it's going to be so phased and graduated in that opening up of the economy, there's not going to be a demand bump anytime soon. And so therefore, for me, this exact same situation quite likely might well reoccur when the US oil fund, the largest crude ETF, rolls over from June to July. And then the June contract has the same issue, because at that point as well, we'll probably be in even a worse situation from a storage point of view. So hopefully that gives you an overview and makes a little bit more sense. Um, like I said, jump on the YouTube channel. If you go back onto our channel, uh, obviously love it if you subscribe, join our community. But if you just jump back to here, what just happened to oil prices and you can see Will explaining this um, and this idea about you know what is Contango, why is it different from normal backwardation and all these types of ideas and why did it happen specifically yesterday? He goes over it and the great thing is he's got his ladder and you can see the tape moving and, and as it was all unfolding. Uh, so it's a really great piece. So yeah, going to leave it at that for the moment. Uh, obviously any questions, just, just let me know. Uh, but quickly going to fire through a few other headlines because I want the focus to be on the oil move because I think that warrants uh, uh, or warranted a bit more of an in-depth explanation. Um, the other thing that a couple of people have mentioned uh, is Kim Jong-un. Uh, I've already kind of given you my top level thoughts about how important I think this is. Basically, the succession risk is what people are a little bit nervous about. Um, the US is seeking details about Kim Jong-un's health after receiving information that the North Korean leader was in critical condition after undergoing cardiovascular surgery last week. Um, he hasn't been seen. I think his number of public appearances has been down. He hadn't been seen for a number of uh, weeks and so on and so forth. The Kospi in South Korea uh, was down overnight. I think it was down about 3%. So you know, a little bit of a reaction there in the local market uh, as well. Um, other things, IBM, um, they came out. They're one of the biggest companies to have reported so far in this season, uh, post the banks that we saw last week. Uh, their shares were down about 3% in the aftermarket reaction. They're about down 10% on the year. Uh, essentially a drop in first quarter revenues. They pulled its profit forecast for the year. So again, it's kind of reality of the, the situation, I guess, at, at this present point in time. On that point uh, of earnings, I know it's a bit small, so let me just talk you through it. There are a few things we're looking out for today on that side. So in chronological order, uh, some of the bigger companies to look out for ahead of the opening bell, uh, Coca-Cola, they'll just be ahead of um, midday in London, so just ahead of 7am if you're in New York. Um, you've got Emerson Electric, Philip Morris, Lockheed Martin, they're probably the bigger names coming out. Uh, Pre-market and then aftermarket, probably one that normally captures a lot of the headlines because generally it sees quite high, high uh, price movement in the aftermarket hours is Netflix. Uh, Netflix they're going to be coming out and reporting after the closing bell. Uh, their expected quarterly EPS at $1.64. Quite, quite amazing, really. Netflix market capitalization these days is just under $200 billion. Uh, That's about the same size as Coca-Cola, which is pretty mind-blowing when you think about it. But uh, just the, the nature of those kinds of uh, new breed of stocks, I guess, in, in, in that sense. Um, all right. Calendar-wise, what have we got today? Um, this morning, a couple of UK numbers already have come out. Um, 
Again, these are backward looking. These are February numbers for UK unemployment, so really don't matter at this point. Uh, obviously, I've been reading the press this morning, getting prepped for this this kind of briefing, and uh, a lot of people focusing on the OBS and their forecasting about the variants we could see with uh, second quarter growth in the UK, and it's going to be pretty diabolical, like this, like what we're going to see in the US. Uh, multiple double digit percentage losses for Q2 uh, is going to soon become a reality. Uh, but from an unemployment situation, the numbers this morning are February, so it's not going to really contain the impact that we're looking for to really get a better sense of how bad the situation is going to be. Um, we get the ZEW economic um, sentiment reading, generally quite interesting from Germany, but we've already, you know, we kind of focused on IFO. Um, the ZEW is the analyst and economist outlook over the next six months. Could be something to just see how basically how bearish people's view has become, but how market moving, I'd say, probably to a lesser extent. And in the US session, not a great deal going on, to be quite frank. I mean, if, if you're trading the loonie, you've got uh, cap retail sales, but pretty quiet on the US front, uh, existing home sales. You've got the weekly order for tree levels, of course, and this is kind of, again, has been something which has only made the situation worse and, and led to the event which we had yesterday because, you know, if you've been tracking those uh, infantry numbers which come out week to week obviously from the, the DOE and the API we've been seeing these double digit sizable builds uh, in the headline crude number and again that just perpetuates this problem that we have at the moment as we've just discussed um, so that that is really it I, I don't will need to really go much more than that I don't think because I'm going to keep it brief hopefully the oil explanation helps uh, as I said if there's any questions just let me know um, and yeah I wish you all a great day ahead. All right, guys, take care.